It's very important that we stick to the itinerary. Oh, it's an itinerary. Okay. And attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for a cute flirt points what for cute flirt points was not part of this evening's activities. That's strictly slotted for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? N no, I was... No time for excuses? Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. Go, 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 go! Okay. Once everyone is gathered, gather around the campfire and sing a campfire song. C-A-M-P! Okay, once everyone is gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry. You hasn't been sticking to the schedule. Fuck you, Claudette. That means we're behind on time for evening activities. And we'll only have time for one person to share their special spooky nighttime story. Me and her can have some campfire time. Shut up, people. Just one story? But, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative-heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh, great. We have to decide as a group? That never goes well. Whoever did this, step up now. I swear I won't be angry. I'll merely chop your head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Okay, Trapper. Voice trembling, you realize this is probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. S sorry everyone, I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't understand how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I was passed out. <clears throat> Been there before, even though it's taking some pressure off of me. Which is an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything ever happened on schedule even once? You rile me up with then telling me to shut up. I cannot take this, Weasel. I cannot take you, Weasel. Damn it, Donald. If you try to- Donald? Damn it, Donald. If you try to flex that authority gimmick one more time, so help me, I'll snap your head off so quick, and then I'll drown you in his blood, Cynthia. Fuss and muss are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. We all know you love to kill. It's almost all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. Damn it, Donald. <laughs> I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. <laughs> but we still gotta get started on story time, so oh my god, Dwight got his name changed. Nobody, okay. Scarlet, who do you think should go? Ah, damn it, that's a name. Please pick somebody quickly so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. Okay. I'm gonna go with Wraith, and the reason being because he was really excited and said that this is a narrative experience and like it's his favorite thing to do is share the story. I choose you, Wraith. Yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> Wraith, let's go. <laughs> whoa, whoa, this entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with the catchphrases with you. Will you? Oh. I choose you, Wraith. It was a Pokemon reference. Okay. Um, I'm not really one for scary stories. Life is scary enough as it is. Uh, you literally carry around a skull and a spine as your little prop. I want to say something, but it's a stretch. Oh my god. Shut up, weasel. <laughs> as the other killers laugh, Wraith holds up his skull and gazes into its hollow, dark eyes. <laughs> if you're looking for something Shakespearean in this story, look elsewhere. This is a tale of madness, of staring at the soul of death and never returning. Once upon a time, a young man worked at a junkyard. The man was quiet, kept to himself, just wanted to avoid trouble. While the boss dealt with the clients, the young man operated the crusher, turning old cars into cubes of twisted metal. One day, right before crushing a car, he noticed something. Blood. Drip. Drip. Dripping. He opened it and found a freight, frightened stranger, bound and gagged. Banker. Um, the young man reeled. Was he about to accidentally murder this stranger? How could this have happened? He freed the stranger who ran off into the waiting arms of the boss, the owner of the junkyard. 
Before his shaken employee could tell him about the mistake they had nearly made, the boss took out a knife and swiftly slit the stranger's throat. Okay, so the story time is backstory. The young man fell to his knees, unable to comprehend what was happening. As he stared at the ground, too shocked to cry, the boss approached him. Well, what did you do? He asked the boss. I did your job for you. What do you mean? That's not my job. My job is to crush the cars. The boss let out a miserable scoff, his face contorting an evil disdain for the pathetic wretch in front of him. Why do you think we're crushing these cars? To save space? Who do you think my clients are? I don't know, mumbled the young man. Yes, you do, screamed the boss. Deep down, you've always known what was happening here. You just didn't want to admit it to yourself. Your hands aren't clean. My clients gave... Oh, sorry, wrong person. Okay. My clients give me money and I take care of their problems, eliminate their witnesses, tie up their loose ends, or actually, you do. No, the young man whimpered as the boss towered above him. Yes, you're nothing more than an executioner, and you've reaped hundreds of souls. Oof. The young man's body shook with soft spasms as he tried to stop crying. It was when the boss started laughing that it happened. Something in the young man changed. He stood up, now taller than the boss. A faint glimmer of fear overtook the snarl on the older man's face. The young man's face was empty empty as he grabbed the boss's throat and dragged him into the car crusher. Empty as he picked up the boss and stuffed him inside. Empty as he slammed the trunk down on him, its stupid fat head sticking out, begging for mercy. Empty as he started the machine, staring at the boss and its sniveling, cry sniveling crying wet face. Empty as he grabbed the boss's head, dug his fingers in, farther piercing the skin. Empty as he squeezed and pulled. Empty as he heard bones popping and snapping. But when the boss's head, still attached to his spine, pulled cleanly out of its disgusting sack of a body, he smiled. Wraith stares back into the eye sockets of his skull. It doesn't matter how good you are, how innocent, how kind, how full of love you once were. When you look into the eyes of evil, you will surely go mad. An awkward silence falls upon the room until offer story make a joke. Yeah. When you look into the eyes of evil, you will surely go mad. My god, that is brilliant. Yeah, I'd probably say that. I'm glad you didn't give us any Shakespeare, because that story made Shakespeare look like a slack jawed, mouth breathing idiot. Thank you. I'm just I'm too overcome. As you sit down, the killers look at each other, unsure if you're joking. Um, thanks. Wraith, on the other hand, is absolutely sure you're joking. You may have gone a little overboard. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts all of seven seconds because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey, baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? Yes! <laughs> yes! He doesn't wait for an answer. Of course, in true trickster fashion. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I wanted you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. Did somebody say Marso sauce? No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Wraith approaches you. Hey, I'm probably not making a great impression, because uh, I guess that's not really my thing. I just know that if you get to know me, then I mean, look, the others aren't around. And I really hate to f and I really hate the fire pit. I just kind of hate fire in general. Maybe we could go back to the pool. And like, I don't know, whatever, you know. A dip in the pool with a wraith? You've come a very long way in a single day. Hey, you're a poet and you didn't even know it. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow him. 
An offer like that? Just don't forget our little talk. Okay, so that's telling me go with Wraith. You and your storyteller friends slip into the water. Arr. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion could handle it. Um, hey, do, do you, do you remember my story? You mean the one you just told, like, a minute ago? Yeah, um, yes. Did you, I mean, like, what did you think of, um, of the young man in the story? Do you think he's weird? No, he's not weird. Well, I don't think he's weird, but he is bad and I'm deeply upset with him. No, 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 I didn't mean to say that. He didn't have all the knowledge he needed to begin with, but what's important is what you do with the knowledge once you have it. In the end, he's no better than the monster he killed. Oh, I see. Oh my god. Well, that makes sense. Um, did the young man remind you of anyone? Yes. It's you. It's clearly you. What? No, it's I'm... You're carrying around the guy's skull and spine with you right now. Wraith looks at Azarov's skull, then, then out in the middle of the distance, a long silence ensues. You notice the temperature has dropped significantly. It's cold in this water. Is it cold in this water now, or is it just me? I, I feel like my toes are turning into ice cubes. Wraith seizes up and squeezes his eyes shut. Please, I can't be any around any cube talk. Not since um I, I heard that story from somebody else a, a long time ago. The story you just told us two minutes ago? Exactly. The one that wasn't about me. Usually we'd be nervous that we were about to make things awkward when we barge in. But obviously we couldn't hold a candle to whatever is happening here tonight. Either way, it's time for bed. For you, but not us. After you go to sleep, that's when we party. After spending all day cooped up in those tight little safari-themed resort uniforms, you just know those two rage late into the night. But you're not here to party with them. You've got your own repressed relationships to tend to. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. You look into the crackling embers. You think about Ruth's story about the young man who found out he was part of a sinister plot. What you don't know about your, what don't you know about your current situation? Is it something that will terrify you? Something that will make you snap? What if you look into the eyes of evil? And what if you like it? Before you can dwell much, dwell too much on your fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. They're now familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that lit by firelight. We must apologize for the, aco for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand over a pillow and a blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Perhaps some music would, will put you at ease. Just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the type that you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. Mind games consist of two. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, this here upcoming mini game is a special mini game, perfect for the less coordinator because there's no winning. Or okay, fuck you, entity. Well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose if it doesn't stop where you want to, that's a bit like losing. But no one has to know if you don't tell. Them. Okay, ready to play? Or would you like me to repeat? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it so that it goes through the options. As you relax, you look into the fire. The radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine it and decide that you might adjust the dial and fix it. What the fuck? Let's see what's on this station. Eh. No matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Would you like to summon to your side as you lay by the fire? I think we all know who the answer is. Huntress, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. <laughs> Weasel, this is for you, buddy. Huntress appears in an instant. You really didn't hear her coming. <laughs> she wasn't humming, really? She's more than happy to tell you her secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. Oh? If a Soviet lullaby doesn't work, this special mushroom tea has always done the trick. I'm not coating... When I'm not coating the blade of my hatchet in it to ease the passing of my victims, I'm steeping it... I'm steeping it in a piping hot mug of water. Try it. Wait. 
when I'm not coating the blade of my hatchet in it to ease the passing of victims. Wait, does she actually like do that? Why does that somehow make the hatchet getting hit by the hatchet like less harsh? I don't know. Like Huntress is a person who clearly cares. I mean, it's literally in her lore, but like that's sweet. If that's if that's a true thing and like this game, one of the goals of this game, sorry, I dropped my cap, is to get you more lore with the killers. I feel like that's really sweet. In like a really creepy killer like psychopath way, and I totally don't have like this Stockholm towards any of these killers trust. That's a lie. Um, you do. You finally start to feel sleepy, uh, except maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky. By now you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head. But this one is undeniably odd. Love it when I am defenseless and she powers over me. Okay, weasel. Really worked up a sweat watching those killers toss the ball around, huh? Would it have hurt so much to go splash around in some cool ocean waves afterwards? I'm just saying. I'm out here, you know? Okay, Ocean, you called me- you, you made fun of me for being obedient, okay? Alright. You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Oh god, who is it? Trapper is sitting beside you sketching a portrait. Nah. Nah. Me and you are not friends. Bartley, this is very sus. You're correct. Also, hi Bartley. We we have tailored this whole thing to be mommy huntress, so um just be prepared for all the huntress you're gonna see. Trapper is sitting beside you sketching a portrait. Oh, you're awake. I saw you with the huntress right before bedtime. You should know they're not what they seem. Not like me, who is obviously completely honest and trustworthy, not compared to what we were doing later. Oh my god. I was out checking to make sure you weren't sleeping near one of my Actually, never mind. Just be careful where you sit. What? One of your what, Trapper? One of your fucking traps? Huh? Okay. But since I'm here, I'd like to share two things with you. One, I do not take rejection well. Two, the first thing is very important to remember. Were you drawing me? Trapper doesn't answer. You aren't drawing stink lines radiating out of me, are you? Still nothing from Trapper. Look, I'm not an easy guy to get along with, but I am an easy guy to spend time with. That will make sense if you choose to spend time with me tomorrow. No. The rest of this scum live like rats. They wouldn't know a good time if I bit them on the ass. I mean that literally. Point is, if you select me, you're in for a day of luxury, extravagance, and fun. Yes, I said fun. And if I don't pick you, remember what I said earlier, or it might be the last thing you ever forget. Oh, so we have to go with Trapper. But hey, you look tired. Get some sleep. Get some rest. Sleep. Maybe even sleep well if you can. Just try not to roll over to the about <clears throat> 15 feet to your left. Finally alone. For real this time. Maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. 